Hello friends, welcome back to the shop and back to the series on the restoration of a marksman guardsman for my friend Johnny Ford. So the pipe right now, uh, this is the stem and, and future tenon for the pipe. Um, I've got the stummel actually set up in the drill press. I did a lot of that work without videoing it just because it's tedious. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take you over to the drill press, show you the setup, and hopefully find an angle where I can actually show you the, the drilling happen. So I'll see you at the drill press. Okay, folks, here we are at the drill press. Um, this is a Grizzly drill press. Uh, I've had this for a very long time. Uh, it's a pedestal model. And what you see here is a jig that I've built that is clamped down to the bench. So these guys here are, are just wooden clamps that are working off the... the the T-nut slot and this is actually adjustable so I can change the angle of this but right now it's set at 90 degrees and there's a peg that comes through and, and maintains it at 90 degrees it's made of MDF it's fairly solid but to be honest I will I've been wanting for a long time to make one of these out of steel yeah, I'll show you it from the side just so you get an idea of what we're looking at sorry the lighting here isn't that good I don't normally film here at the drill press uh, this right here is just a shop jack that I've put in there to sort of make sure that this doesn't flex while I'm drilling because that's the one weak part of this since this is kind of sticking out as, as a lever it does have the tendency to, to flex in this direction uh, across this way it's pretty stable but this way it's not so much uh, so the stumble is in there hopefully you can see that this is just the uh, the face of the, the shank here that we've taken that uh, that old tenon off of and what I've got chucked up here is just a six millimeter chucking reamer and that's simply there to allow me something where I can say okay this is lined up properly so that goes down into that hole without any issue so that was just used for alignment now everything is clamped down and solid and I can switch over to to my drill bits and I've got two drill bits here. Uh, the hole is roughly six millimeters. This is a quarter inch drill bit, which is slightly more than six millimeters. And this is a five sixteenth inch drill bit, which is the final size that I want. And I'm hoping that'll be enough of a step that I'll be able to drill this out uh, nicely. Uh, both have been marked off to a half inch, which is the depth I want for that, uh, that new tenon to be inserted and we're going to go ahead and, and get started with this. So I'm going to set you up on a on a uh, tripod and see if we can film this. I'm not sure how well this is going to work out but we'll give it our best shot. That's a fairly good angle. Uh, you can see that reamer move down and I think I've got enough room between the drill press uh, handle and the camera without knocking it so let's see what we can do. Again, that, that's a six millimeter uh, chucking reamer that's there purely to align things and to make sure that we can uh, yeah, accurately drill. So let's get that out of the way. How do I get that out of the way? It's a long little book so there we go set that aside it's a long expensive little bugger all right and now I'm hoping I've got enough travel on my press here to to make it down to that and to actually drill the half inch so I'm just adjusting the stop on the press, which is always a pain in the butt. I rarely use the depth stop and the little nuts just tend to wander on me. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and this is the quarter inch. Quarter inch bit. And yeah, it looks like we'll be able to make that with room to spare. Tighten that up. Always tighten in all three holes. There's three holes there for a reason. Okay, let's see. That looks good. 
that looks pretty good and we've got a good two inches of travel so we're not going to have any issue at all with that now in terms of uh, lubrication so normally when drilling aluminum uh, a lot of people will use WD-40 which works quite well I don't want to spray WD-40 down into the pipe uh, just doesn't seem like a good idea so what I've got here is just some regular old petroleum jelly, Vaseline, white petrolatum, whatever you might call it. Um, it will lube it just fine and we just need to put a little bit on the drill bit. Alright, so let's start her up and uh, see how this goes. smoothly. So now let's switch over to the 5 sixteenths bit and hopefully you can see the importance of keeping that stone rigid and you know getting it aligned properly. Oops. Because if this was off-center of course that'll put the tenon off-center which will then put the um, the stem off and it's the same process that I would use for the uh, if I was doing a tenon replacement on a stem although I usually will do that in a four jaw chuck on the lathe all right got all three holes tight that's running true again I'll put a little bit of lube on the end there and of course the nice thing about Petroleum jelly is that it will just uh, be easy to wipe away, and whatever doesn't get wiped away will get removed by the retort if it's if it's an issue. All right, here we go. Well, that wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> That's okay. Should have thought about that. That uh, that's really just a little washer that was glued on the end there. That's okay. We'll just we'll move that and continue on. I do want to just adjust this a bit. Okay. So what we've basically done is we've removed the the aluminum tube. That's you know it was a complicated way of removing that tube, but since it goes all the way through the pipe, we couldn't just pull it out or cut it off. Um, there you have it. I'll uh, clean up and I'll see you back at the bench. All right. So I'm hopeful that that um, video came out over at the the drill press. But what we have done now is we have drilled away the aluminum insert down to one half inch which is the distance of this knurling on this part and I'm happy it's it's actually a pretty good press fit which is what I was hoping for I'm not going to push it in there because I may have trouble getting it out which is good so that's all great we won't know how well we line up until uh, obviously this is put in place and we we have to trim some off of this but that's okay um, even if we're off a little bit 
uh, we'll be able to adjust it. So I'm not I'm not too worried about that. The little washer here, I should have thought to take this off before I tried to drill it. Uh, and you saw if, if the video came out, you'll see that this gets caught on the drill, and that's that's fine. I'll be able to uh, glue that back into place, and we may have to ream it out a little bit because it seems to be a bit smaller, which is surprising, but uh, probably not. It'll, it, I may have raised a burr on that, and that's why this isn't passing through so easily. Also, these are adjustable. You can, you can squeeze the end of this and make it uh, more or less tight for the fit on the stem. At any rate, we're ready to, to get this put in. But before we do that, I want to clean up this old one. It's got uh, some pretty heavy glue residue there, and I'm going to just soak this in alcohol for a while and try to scrub that off. If that doesn't work, I might move to mineral spirits. Uh, we'll get it cleaned up. We'll rinse it with acetone just to make sure we get rid of any uh, oil or anything like that on it. Let it dry, and we'll be ready to uh, push this in place and perhaps before that we'll fit it to the stem because it is currently too long and that's about as far as it will go into the stem so we need to take uh, about maybe oh I don't know proud quarter inch off of that to get it to fit properly so we'll do that get this fit to the stem and then we'll, we'll glue this in place but right now I'm just going to clean this so I'm going to soak it in alcohol I'll bring you back after this is cleaned up well, we did an overnight soak in uh, Everclear, and that seemed to do the trick for the most part. This is relatively clean. I, I did chuck it in the lathe and uh, you know, very lightly chucked it because I didn't want to crush the aluminum and did a, um, a brass brush on it just to, to help clean that out. And I think this is going to be fine. Uh, it's a nice knurled surface, so there's, there's plenty, of, plenty of surface area there to hold the epoxy. It's... Uh, going to be a press fit which is what I want you know I want this to be very very tight going in there now the next step is going to be to figure out and to cut this because it doesn't that's as far as as it will go in the stem and we know that we're only going to get a half inch in here because we we drilled this to a half inch and we can measure that again just to make sure that's going to bring us to about there so we've got a bit here that we have to account for and we're going to do that by removing it sorry <laughs> removing it from this end so what I'm going to do is uh, I've got to measure that up but before I can do that I've got to get this stem clean because there is gunk in there and uh, until this is degunked I can't get an accurate measurement to know where to cut this and I do want this to be pretty darn close to perfect because you know if you can imagine this sitting in a in in this mortise here if it's you know leaving any particular space that's that's per presenting a drop or a step in the airway. Now you could argue it's not that important because you got these things anyway and this was really designed for a filter uh, but we're gonna we're gonna try to do our best. So we want to get this to bottom out in that mortise uh, pretty close to, to, to flat. And then we'll be able to do the glue up and uh, do some refinishing. So. I'm going to set all this aside. I'm going to focus on the stem now and I'm going to do, uh, you know, I'll clean up the outside, just scrub it up a little bit to get rid of the, the gunk on the outside. I'll clean the inside with uh, pipe cleaners and alcohol. Uh, no need for you to see that. And I'll bring you back once we're uh, ready to cut this. All right, so we cleaned the stem, uh, scrubbed it both inside and outside. Uh, just got the gunk off of it. We're, we still got a lot of work to do on the outside of the stem, obviously. But it allowed us to get a clean measurement of, of this tenon depth. And this is uh, a sketch, and I, I saved you the agony of watching me measure everything, but I will just quickly go through. So this is the stummel side. Uh, we drilled this. We were shooting for a half inch. We, got a, we overshot that by a little bit. So the depth here is, is 0.565 inches. 
On the stem side, uh, I've measured the depth of the tenon in the stem to be 0.54 inches. And the total length of this guy here is 1.348 inches. And, you know, we, we obviously don't need to be that accurate, but what the heck. So we take the 1.348 and we subtract away the total distance here, which is, you know, when everything sits properly, that's how much space the tenon needs to take up. One more thing. It was important to account for this, which uh, came off when I was drilling, but will be reattached to the pipe. And that's what's indicated by this little black here, the little darkening. Uh, that's the, I don't know what to call that. I'm calling it a washer, but it's obviously not. It's a shank adornment, I suppose. So we got uh, total distance of the tenon minus the distance of the mortise in the stummel and the mortise in the stem. And that gives us a number of 0 0.243. And I was saying a quarter inch, so that was pretty close. Uh, just put a little bit of black Sharpie on here and then scratched a line into that. Hopefully you can see that line on both sides. And that's where we're going to go to. So the next step is going to be to go over to the belt sander and sand away that much of the aluminum debar it, make sure it's uh, it's nice and pretty and ready to go, and then we'll glue this up. All right, we're in good shape. So I've I've trimmed that down. I've uh, cleaned it up a bit with some steel wool just to get the sharpie off of it, and we can measure that. So if you add these two numbers together, you get something like 1,000. Well, 0.115 if I'm remembering it right. And if we measure the length here, it is uh, 0.11, eh, that's six, seven, something like that. That's pretty darn good. Uh, we'll, uh, we can always adjust this after it's in place, but we're pretty close to where we need to be. All right, next steps, and these are all gonna care off camera. Um, this is a smooth surface in here. This is nicely knurled, so we don't have to worry about it. I'm gonna take this tool just a little uh, ball cutter here in a rotary tool and I'm just going to go in and pockmark the, the face of this lightly just to provide a little bit of something for the epoxy to grab onto. I don't want to widen this out too much but I'll just do it judiciously. And then for epoxy we're going to use uh, G-Flex 655 which is my uh, epoxy of choice these days. Uh, mix it up Put a little bit in here, put a little bit in here, press these together, trying to keep the orientation of this to the side. Not that it's that important, but you know, just aesthetics. Uh, and then uh, we should be ready to just put this back on. Well, we gotta add the little uh, washer. And then this will go back on and we can get to refinishing the exterior. So, uh, Let's do that, and I'll bring you back when we have that complete. All right, we've reached a very exciting point here. We got the tenon reinstalled. Uh, it's sunk in there quite nicely. Uh, plenty of epoxy to hold it in place. I've reinstalled the shank adornment, uh, AKA washer. <laughs> and that was, that was pretty easy. They just took advantage of some of the squeeze out and distributed it around and just put, oh, I did uh, sand that down a little bit with some, just some 220 grit sandpaper, just to get rid of the old um, adhesive. And uh, that ought to do it. And the, the epoxy takes quite a while to set, but I can, I can test fit this just because it's not very tight and it, it's got that knurling holding it in place here. And you can see we're a little bit off. There, there's just a tiny little gap there, which uh, is fine. It's the same gap all the way around. So we'll just have to file a little bit off the end here to, to get this to, to match up. So no problem at all. We're in very good shape. I'm going to allow that epoxy to cure. It does take about, um, like I said, 24 hours, 48 hours to fully cure. But it's hard as nails, so it's, uh, it's really worth the wait. So with that, I'm going to call this, uh, this video to a close. The next video will be about the cleaning up the outside of the pipe and getting rid of the scratches and such on the stem and polishing everything up, cleaning the outside of this pipe. And then it will be done and ready to go back to Johnny. So 
Thank you for watching. If you would like to see more of these videos, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll know when the next one comes out. So I thank you all, and we will talk again soon.